A-I. These two vowels have taken on almost supernatural hype in recent years. Let's try to drag and drop the hype to the recycle bin and defrag the sort of truth that is artificial intelligence. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hemberger, and this is Science Bites, presented by the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Let's start by going over the basics. AI simply stands for artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is exactly that. It is, by definition, a machine or computer being assigned to perform a human task, and it is not a new phenomenon. Technically, flipping an ancient sand-filled hourglass is utilizing artificial intelligence to mark the passage of time as opposed to a human being sitting there counting. Arguably, a scarecrow utilizes artificial intelligence to scare away birds from a crop so the farmer can focus on other chores. The point is, technically, humans have been implementing artificial intelligence for as long as we've been official humans. Where AI takes on the hype as we know it today really starts post-World War II with the extremely fast progress of transistor-based computers and ramps up exponentially in correlation with Moore's Law, especially since the 1980s. Mr. Five, Mr. Five, tell us how you feel. How do I feel? I feel alive! Now, Moore's Law, simply put, is a very rough observation that the number of transistors in an integrated circuit roughly doubles roughly every two years. So, doing the simple napkin math, computers today are inconceivably more powerful than they were just a few years ago, and will be inconceivably more powerful than today just a few years from now. Now, I know the concept of Moore's Law is a bit more nuanced today than that, but we'll just leave it there for sake of argument. And we're not even going to get into the literal infinite complexity of quantum computing just on our technological horizon. So, let's take a quick breath to warm boot our brains for a moment. Okay, stay with me. The next bit is going to use some highfalutin words, but I promise I'll wrap a nice, easily understandable bow on this topic before we end the episode. All you need to know right now is that computers today are very, very powerful and thus can be used to assign very, very complex artificial intelligence. But it is still one and the same as using an ancient hourglass. Where humans assigned the hourglass to count the passage of time, today we can do things like assign a computer to recognize weeds in a lettuce patch and zap them with a laser instead of using harmful chemicals, or help cars drive themselves, or make art, or write papers, or whatever. The uses of AI can be confusing and dauntingly vast, so now would be a good place to define some of the different flavors, if you will, of AI to bring order to the vague, seemingly ominous cloud that is the hype word, technically acronym, AI. AI as we know it today can be broken down into two categories, each with a few branches. The two categories are capability-based AI and functionality-based AI. So first, let's look at the three branches under capability AI. Those three branches are narrow AI, general AI, and super AI. Narrow AI, sometimes called weak AI, is used to perform a narrow task. For example, asking Alexa or Siri to subscribe to Science Bites, or typing Houston Museum of Natural Science into Google, or asking a translation app to say Science Bites in French. Scientifique. Narrow AI performs narrow tasks. General AI, sometimes called strong AI, is roughly equivalent to human intelligence. It can understand and learn any task a human can. However, and this is a huge however, this is not yet perfected nor technically fully possible with current technology and it is unknown how long, if ever, it will take to achieve. For example, the most powerful supercomputers in the world, when programmed to mimic our brain, take, at best, nearly a full minute to process the same amount of data a human brain does in just one second. Now the kicker 
if that wasn't enough, is that in attempting to do so, these supercomputers can consume upwards of 10,000 average homes worth of electricity. <laughs> All that to say, we are a ways away from robots walking the streets equal to human intelligence. The human brain still far, far exceeds the computational abilities of even the most powerful supercomputers and consumes infinitesimally less electricity to do so exponentially faster. So that's general AI. It's equal to the human brain, but we are not there yet and we won't be for quite a while, if ever, or at least until quantum computing is perfected and put to wide-scale adoption, which in itself is an unknown time frame, if ever. But putting a man on the moon was also, if ever. Okay, so those were the three branches of capability-based AI. Now we're on to the second category of AI called functionality-based AI. And there are four branches of functionality-based AI. The first branch of functionality-based AI is called reactive machines. A reactive machine does not store memories, nor does it draw upon past experience to aid in taking future action. A good example would be playing a game of chess on your phone against the computer. Computer chess games, by the way, have been around for decades, as most of us know. Chess master anyone? The computer only reacts as best it can to the move you've just made in relation to the rest of the positions on the board. So, a reactive machine only reacts to current information in making a judgment. The second branch of functionality-based AI is called limited memory. This is most akin to the AI used by self-driving cars. So for example, when determining a lane change, it remembers what lane stripes look like, what other vehicles look like, what the current situation looks like, etc. And then based on previous data from similar situations, determines whether or not it is safe to change lanes. Again, that's called limited memory AI. The third branch of functionality-based AI is called theory of mind and this branch is still mostly conceptual. An example would be a machine or robot that attempts to understand and react to human emotion, thoughts, and sentiments. This branch is not perfected. There have been demonstrations, however, building human-looking robot faces that use cameras to look at your eyes and face, then use mathematic algorithms to try and determine your mood before formulating its own reaction. As fantastical as this sounds, in the grand AI timeline, it is still just a cool party trick. So again, that was theory of mind AI. So the fourth and last branch of functionality-based AI is called self-awareness. It is, of course, hypothetical. It is exactly what it sounds like. A self-aware machine that believes it is alive, has feelings, and even forms its own belief system. It would far surpass human limitations and even be able to articulately manipulate emotions in the humans it interacts with. The moral and ethical implications of such a machine would be enormous. But again, this branch of AI, self-awareness, is purely conceptual. Before we put a bow on AI, let's briefly explain some of the tools used by the different branches and categories of AI. So, machine learning. Machine learning uses data to create advanced mathematic equations, yes, otherwise known as algorithms. These algorithms can be used, for example, to recognize images or language. Your social media is advertising shoes to you because you've been looking at shoes, taking pictures of shoes, and talking about shoes. Deep learning uses the immense data pool of what other machines have determined shoes are, also known as a neural network, to increase certainty that those red slippers peeking out from under the house are, in fact, slippers. And it is, in fact, a house on top of them. And perhaps, based on a vast network of data supporting this idea, likely attached to a wicked witch's legs. Natural language processing. This is the process of learning the natural ways human beings speak, write, or otherwise interact with machines using language. Chat GPT, anyone? More on that in a moment. Robotics. Think vehicle assembly line or any physical human motions or tasks that can be replicated by a machine. Lastly, for this episode anyway, expert tasks. 
Expert tasks would be, for example, AI being used to make a medical diagnosis or a financial plan. As you can tell, the subject of AI is vast with many different areas and facets. In fact, though we've broken it down here into different categories and branches, etc., all of those are mixed and intertwined with each other to meet, or at least reach for, different specific goals. So you've undoubtedly heard by now of ChatGPT in the modern news cycle. ChatGPT is using many of the categories and branches mentioned here in conjunction with one another to continually improve in mimicking human written language. So machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, etc, 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 and several more aspects of AI are used to write stories, essays, and even write programming code when asked to do so, with varying degrees of success, mind you, because it's not perfect. And as good as it gets, it may never be absolutely perfect. If something seems off, and it usually is, about something you're reading, writing, watching, or hearing, that's how you know it is AI, or at least it'll raise a mental red flag that bears more investigation. For instance, even the best AI-generated paintings and photographs have something off when you look closely. Dinosaurs with three arms, human hands with six fingers, or simply just proportions that are ever so slightly out of whack. So at a glance, it looks or sounds good, but look, listen, or read twice, and you'll likely catch it and know it as a product of artificial intelligence. So here's how we put a bow on AI. As daunting as modern AI sounds, the basic concept is still as simple as that ancient hourglass being used to tell time. It is just that only time will tell how we ultimately use it. Thank you for listening to Science Bites presented by the Houston Museum of Natural Science. If you like this episode, be sure to check out our other Science Bites by hitting that subscribe button and subscribe to our other podcasts simply by searching HMNS in your favorite podcast player. And if you really liked it, we'd appreciate you sharing with your friends. But until next time, I've been your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Thanks for listening and stay curious. Curious.